Overclocking CPU is not as hard as you might think. The main thing you need to know is that overclocking is the problem of your motherboard, not yours. All you need to do is just change some parameters in BIOS, then reboot your PC and test it for stability. That's all. I'm not a PC specialist, I'm just a simple PC user. In the previous video I described my upgrading path. This time I will show you how to overclock X3470 or any other CPU for 1156 socket. If you want to know which motherboard is the best for overclocking, there are plenty of videos about this matter. I need to say just one more thing. Asus P7P55D doesn't officially support any of Xeon CPUs, so I wasn't 100% sure if X3470 will work with my motherboard. But, as it turned out, I didn't even need to upgrade the BIOS version. Xeon CPU was identified by the board as soon as I installed it and turned my PC on. Some word about cooling. I'm using old tower CPU air cooler with 5 copper heat pipes. It is Zalman CNPS10X Quiet. It's a decent choice for X3470. I'd even say it's an optimal choice. You'll see why. As concerns thermal paste, I use Arctic Cooling MX4. As you probably know, before you start changing parameters in BIOS, you need to install the application called Ada64 and a couple of CPU intensive games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey or Watch Dogs 2. These are needed to test your CPU stability. And I am saying two games because sometimes one game may operate just fine while the other one won't even start. Let me explain my solution for X3470 overclock. After plenty of tests I discovered that the most effective overclock can be achieved by increasing BCLK frequency as much as you can. To find the highest BCLK frequency for your motherboard and CPU, you need to decrease CPU ratio or multiplier to the minimum. For X3470 it's 9. Then you also need to decrease DRAM frequency to the minimum too. For X3470 operating at base PCLK frequency, which is 133 MHz, it is 800 MHz. You may leave any other parameters at stack settings. These are not as important as these two. After your lowered CPU ratio and DRAM frequency, you can start searching for the highest PCLK frequency. You may want to know why this parameter is the most important one. It's because a lot of things depend on it. When you increase BCLK frequency, you can see that the frequency of CPU itself and RAM also increases. But that's not all. There are two more parameters which depend on it. These are North Bridge frequency and the speed of CPU cache. Both of these characteristics greatly improve PC performance. So if you have high quality motherboard like Asus P7 P55D, your maximum stable BCLK frequency will probably be some value between 205 and 220 MHz. For lower quality motherboards, it's probably be some value between 180 and 200 MHz. Just set it to 180 MHz at first and then try to reboot your PC and test it for stability. First you need to start ADA64, click on Tools, System Stability Check, check the first 4 boxes and press Start button. Wait for at least 10 minutes. If there are no errors in status window and the screen of the application is not red, then you are fine. Next, start a game, unlock frame rate, try to load CPU as much as you can. If you have an old weak GPU, lower some settings like resolution, AA, AO, etc. Move quickly between different locations for at least 10 minutes. If your PC is still stable, no blue screen and any other errors, then try to increase BCLK frequency again. I found out that my motherboard can operate at 205 MHz, while at 206 MHz I may suddenly get blue screen. After some more time of testing, I achieved better results by increasing CPU PLL voltage. I changed it from auto, which is basically 1.8 volts, to 2 volts. This time the maximum BCLK was 218 MHz. So as you can see, this made quite a big difference. 
So if there is a possibility to change TLL voltage on your motherboard, try it. Then I started to search the highest RAM speed. Depending on the quality of your DRAM modules, you may need to increase DRAM voltage. 1.65 volts is the maximum safe value. So at first you may set it to 1.65 volts. After you find the highest possible DRAM frequency, try to reduce DRAM voltage to the value which still allows your DRAM operate stable. I am using gaming memory from Crucial Cold Ballistics. These modules are quite fast. They can hit more than 200 MHz without any problem. But unfortunately they refuse to operate at maximum multiplier, which is 12. Thus they couldn't work at 26-16 MHz. After I lowered RAM multiplier to 10, so that the RAM frequency was 2180 MHz, I was able to boot my PC. But after a minute of stability test, error occurred. I could lower RAM multiplier down to 8 and get 1744 MHz. But in my experience it's too slow. Such low frequency would bottleneck performance of the PC. So I chose to decrease PCLK frequency instead. And after some testing I figured out that 2100 MHz is the highest stable frequency for my RAM. It was achieved by setting BCLK frequency to 210 MHz and setting RAM multiplier to 10. Now it's time to find the maximum frequency for the CPU itself. In this case you need to pay attention to CPU and motherboard temperatures. The maximum operating temperature for Xeons is 73 degrees Celsius. So I wouldn't recommend to greatly exceed this value. Thanks to my intelligent motherboard, I didn't need to set the CPU voltage or so-called core voltage manually. So I left this setting at auto. But you might need to change this value manually. So I would recommend to set it to 1.32 volts. This should be more than enough for moderate PC overclock. And do not forget that if you want to reach 3.6 GHz or higher, you need a decent tower cooler with at least 4 heat pipes. All you need to do is increase CPU multiplier, step by step. I would recommend you to start from 15, if you were able to reach at least 200 MHz PCLK. If you stopped at 180 to 190 MHz, then you'd start with 16. Then repeat all the actions described earlier. Run 10 minute system stability test. Then launch a game and play for 10-15 minutes, trying to load your CPU as much as you can. No errors? Then increase CPU multiplier by 1 and do all the tests again. My CPU was stable even at the value of 19, which resulted in 3919 MHz. But the temperature was way above 73 degrees Celsius, so I stepped down to 18. And this time at 3780 MHz, the maximum temperature during 10 minute CPU stress test was around 73-75 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely fine. The last thing you need to do is to decrease CPU voltage as much as you can. My CPU was able to work at 3.8 GHz with just 1.26 volts, while the motherboard automatically set it to 1.29 volts. By lowering voltage I could achieve 71 degrees Celsius for the CPU in stress test, which is a great result. Your CPU may be even more efficient or, on the contrary, less efficient. But I believe you probably will be able to overclock your sample to 3.8 GHz while staying under 73 degrees Celsius. So, 3.8 GHz is, in my opinion, an optimal overclock for any 8-thread CPUs for 1156 socket. 200 additional megahertz doesn't really make any big difference. You will get 1 to 3 more frames per second in games at best. So if you want to use your CPU at 3.9 gigahertz, you'd better purchase high-end CPU cooler with 6 copper pipes or water cooling solution, which will be even better choice. The problem is that the price for such CPU coolers is high and do not justify a small improvement in performance you will get in return. This is why I think a CPU cooler with 5 pipes is a golden mean, an optimal cooling solution for these old CPUs. There is one more thing. If your motherboard doesn't have a couple of heatsinks located near CPU socket, you will need to install an additional small cooler, 
which will be cooling this zone called VRM. If you are going to overclock your CPU to 3.9 GHz or higher, you will need this additional cooler anyway, even if you have the best motherboard with massive heat sinks. Otherwise, your motherboard can overheat and get damaged.